Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Kaiju Customs. Uh, today we're going to be customizing the monster Magular. And our base figures this time are going to be the monster Niranga from the original Ultraman, obviously, as well as Gakuma, a monster from Ultraman Tiga that not many people talk about. So the goal of this custom was essentially to sort of mesh these two figures together. Uh, that is, merge Naranga's arms, legs, and head and such with Gakuma's crawling position because the Naranga figure by itself just stands up normally. So first off, I just attached the uh, arms and legs of Naranga to make sure that uh, they would be able to fit nicely on Gakuma with a bit of molding, obviously. Uh, they did. So then I proceeded to chop off Naranga's head and decapitate him a little bit. Uh, and I also cut off Naranga's uh, antenna on the top of his head, because obviously Magular does not have those antenna, only Naranga does. And I also uh, brought in a tail from an EX Red King figure that I have. Uh, and don't worry, it's not really that big of a deal, because the EX Red King figure that I bought a while ago was damaged anyway, so... Yeah, just figured I would use it for something. So I essentially just began trimming all of the uh, Niranga parts to get them to fit on Gakuma correctly, so trimmed the rings around the vinyl a little bit where they would turn on uh, the Niranga figure. And I also uh, had to cut off Gakuma's feet, hands, and uh, his head to allow space for those Niranga parts. Uh, because one thing that I did want to do with this custom was uh, maintain the articulation of at least the arms and legs of the Gakuma figure for Magular so that we wouldn't wind up with just a still statue and I could still use him in something. So then we just took a bit of uh, the classic epoxy clay and molded Niranga's parts onto Gakuma's parts. So essentially just slipped the legs on like sleeves almost, uh, and then same with the arms, and Put some clay there just to ensure that they would be bound together permanently essentially. And also with the process of doing this I took Niranga's forearms uh, and cut off the hands and twisted them around so that uh, the hands at the very front of Magular would be facing toward the ground because by themselves Niranga's hands face outward in sort of a straightforward position so I just molded those uh, to face the other way so that Magular could actually look like he's crawling more at the time. Once the head, arms, and legs were all uh, molded onto Gakuma's par different parts respectively. Uh, I cut off the middle back row of Gakuma's spikes uh, because Magular only has two main rows of spines on his back uh, while Gakuma has three. So I just cut off that middle row and put a bit of clay in the middle there uh, in order to give us a proper base to work with later when texturing Magular. So then possibly the most tedious process of this entire figure I uh, was molding the tiny horns and spikes and all that stuff onto Magular's face. Uh, which is essentially just uh, many different small pieces of clay all being molded onto Magular's face to get that sort of spiny, uh, thorny look that the suit has. But thankfully, we didn't have to do that for too long, uh, as once all that was done, uh, I began working on remolding Gakuma's back spikes into something that looked more like Magular's back spines. So I essentially just took some clay and built up around Gakuma's spikes on his back that I had left, and also created uh, the very first set of spikes from scratch, because those would be much bigger than all of the other spikes on Magular, and also Gakuma didn't have spikes in those places originally to mold around, so those had to be made from scratch. Once those spikes were all remade, uh, we just took some more clay and began to create the body texture for Magular. And Magular, since he's this just sort of underground monster, uh, his body's sort of textured like rocks and boulders and stuff almost. So what I essentially did was just take various pieces of clay and mold them onto the body essentially in almost like a, a cobblestone pathway kind of pattern. And I also took uh, one of my clay sculpting tools uh, just to help accentuate the dividers between those little rocky pieces so that it looked a lot more like Magular was literally made from boulders and rocks coming together. And during the process of all this, I had to be extremely careful to uh, ensure that the way that the body texture was molded would not mess up the articulation of Magular's arms and legs. Which unfortunately meant that a couple parts of Magular could not be fully created with uh, the rocky texture, but the figure still looks pretty good in the end. 
Once uh, the main body was covered in that rocky texture, uh, that same process was extended to the EX Red King tail, uh, as well as the very top of the back, which was previously just flat from removing uh, Gakuma's back row of spikes. And once all that had been done, we wound up with our finished sculpt of Magular, which meant that now it was time for the entire figure to come together with the painting process. So Magular was a really easy figure to paint essentially, really just because I wound up just using uh, one gray mixture throughout the entire figure. Uh, there, there's a tiny bit of shading involved, uh, but I saw no real need to add even more shading than I did. So really the entire body of Magular is just this one gray color. And then the only other thing that I did with the paint was paint the uh, teeth on Magular's face a darker gray because on the base of the Ranga figure there's sort of this bone-ish yellowish color and uh, that's not how it looks on Magular. Magular has gray teeth that almost blend in with the rest of his body so I just repainted over all those. And once that was done, Magular was complete. Uh, so this is probably one of the most tedious customs that I've had to make thus far, uh, mainly just in the sculpting department, having to ensure that all the articulation stays proper and functional, and molting certain parts of Magular, like the face with all those tiny tiny spikes and horns, was very frustrating. And generally the sculpting process took uh, about three or four separate nights I think to get all that done, so um, I think it was worth it in the end though. I really like how Magular turned out. Uh, I was originally going to use Naranga at some point in Zone Fighter, uh, but I wound up deciding against that once the story was written in a way that didn't really allow for the idea that I had for Naranga. So to remedy that, I plan on giving Magular a small cameo at some point in Season 2 of Zone Fighter. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Kaiju Customs. This was a nice custom to make. Um, no matter how frustrating it was, I still had fun doing it. And next Kaiju Customs video will probably be Empowered Bemular. But that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys here next time for whatever it is I have to offer.